Welcome to the Simplify Your Life podcast. It's Coach Simona and I'm glad you decided to tune in. Hey everyone, in today's podcast episode we're going to talk about how to improve your relationship with yourself. And I'm going to share with you three in-depth tips on how to build a relationship with yourself. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Simona, certified life coach and author of the book 111 Ways to Simplify Your Life. I make weekly podcast episodes on personal development, so if that's something that you're interested in, make sure to subscribe. Now, before we get into my three-step framework on how to improve the relationship you have with yourself, I want to talk about the importance of building a relationship with yourself and what I've learned in the past few years on my own journey towards self-love. Building a healthy, loving relationship with yourself isn't something that's taught in school, and it's definitely not something that even our parents knew how to show us, because most of them didn't have it. Taking good care of yourself, being compassionate, kind, and gentle, especially in difficult moments, can help you build a solid foundation for a healthy relationship with yourself. But why is it so hard to improve your relationship with yourself, and what can you do to build a healthy, loving relationship with yourself? Let's get into my first tip, which is to stop being so hard on yourself. You know that little voice on the back of your head that keeps saying mean things to you all day long? That is your inner critic. It's the internalized voice of a parent, teacher, or primary caretaker. It's not you. The problem is, it took many years of critical bringing, social conditioning, and heartbreak to make you question your worth every step of the way. So now your job as an adult is to unlearn everything that no longer aligns with your truth and reinvent yourself. So what is the first step you can take to stop being so hard on yourself? One of the easiest things you can do is start becoming aware of your thoughts throughout the day. If you notice some negative patterns such as saying, I'm not good enough. I don't deserve success. No one's going to love me for who I really am. Try to detach yourself from these thoughts and question their validity. Here's what happens when you keep repeating a negative thought over and over again. It turns into a false belief you have about yourself or the people around you. Then your body starts associating these thoughts with a certain emotion. For example, every time you think that the world is a scary place and something bad is going to happen, you're triggering your anxiety. And here's where it gets really interesting. When you feel that emotion, you start engaging in unhelpful behavior to try and cope with the negative sensations you feel in your body. You may start binge-watching Netflix or engage in scrolling on social media for hours. Why? Because you're trying to escape the pain and calm down your anxiety. So here is where ATR comes in handy. ATR is short for Automatic Thought Record, which is a simple tool I use with my clients for managing racing thoughts and challenging emotions. I've created a free copy of it so that you can download it and use it to keep track of all the moments throughout the day when you're being too hard and critical towards yourself. If you want to download it, just click the link in the description box below or simply visit bit.ly slash thought record tool. Now let's go back to what we're trying to achieve here. Writing down your thoughts on paper will help you see the link between your thoughts and emotions. And that in turn will help you become aware of your behaviors so that you can choose alternative behaviors in the future. Improving the relationship with yourself can start with rainbows and sunshine. First, you have to take out all the trash you've accumulated in your mind throughout the years. By becoming more aware of the moments throughout the day when you're being too hard on yourself, you can choose a different route. Which actually brings me to the second step. Keep the commitments you make to yourself. If you're used to being flaky when it comes to the commitments you make to yourself, That is a clear sign you put other people's needs before your own. But we're going to change that. The first thing you can do to start keeping the commitments you make to yourself is to keep it small and simple. For example, instead of committing to writing the best novel in the world in the next 30 days, commit to writing 100 words per day. Another example of keeping the commitments you make to yourself is to not be neglectful when it comes to your basic needs and self-care. We often focus on pleasing everyone around us and spend so much time and energy trying to predict their needs instead of asking ourselves one simple question. What do I need? So I want you to think of all the times you've neglected yourself in the past week. You can even pause this episode and write down some things that come to mind. Did you promise to spend extra 10 minutes on your skincare routine but work got in the way? Or wanted to cook yourself a delicious meal 
but decided to cancel because you thought you weren't worth the extra time and effort. Think about all the times you've neglected yourself and start small. Commit to 10 minutes for yourself today where you're going to take care of whatever needs to be taken care of when it comes to you. No guilt tripping, just being kind and respectful towards your needs and wishes. Now, once you start keeping these small daily commitments, you will begin to trust yourself more and that in turn will help you improve your relationship with yourself as well. I'm actually working on something very exciting that will help you even further when it comes to accepting yourself and loving yourself unconditionally. So if you want to be the first to know, make sure to sign up for the waitlist by clicking the first link in the description box below or visiting bit.ly slash the secret waitlist. Now let's get into my next tip on how to improve your relationship with yourself. Be kind, patient, and compassionate towards yourself. Now I'm going to break down each one of these things and give you actionable steps that you can implement right away. Let's start with kindness. Being kind towards others is something that comes naturally to many of us. So why is it so hard to be kind to ourselves? As we previously mentioned in my first tip on how to stop being so hard on yourself, we've all been programmed to think, feel, and act in a certain way, which is not always in our best interest. For some strange reason, self-love is a buzzword often associated with narcissism and being self-absorbed. This couldn't be further from the truth. Self-love is about being kind and compassionate towards yourself. It's about being there for yourself when you feel down. It's about knowing your strengths and your weaknesses and being okay with who you are, no matter what everybody else thinks of you. So what is one actionable step you can take towards being kind to yourself today? You can start by accepting your imperfections. We all have flaws and weaknesses. That's what makes us human. As a recovering perfectionist, I know how easy it can be to start beating yourself up over every mistake and think that no matter how much you work on something, it's never quite ready to be released. I get that. But the problem with perfectionism is that it's robbing you of your individuality. It's turning you into this vanilla, cookie-cutter, perfect image of someone that doesn't really exist. This doesn't mean you can't work on improving yourself, becoming more self-aware, and generally being a better version of yourself. After all, this podcast episode is all about improving your relationship with yourself. And that is fantastic. The important thing is to know that we're always going to be work in progress. And your desire for growth shouldn't stem from the fear of not being perfect or good enough, but your willingness to become a better human being every single day by working on yourself. Being kind when you make a mistake. Being kind when you forget to do something. Being kind when you say something that you shouldn't have said to someone you love. These are just some examples of self-kindness and accepting your imperfections. If you want to learn even more ways on how to give yourself kindness and grace, make sure to listen to episode 155 next. I will leave a link below. The second thing I mentioned is to be patient with yourself. For me personally, this was the hardest one to work on. I was so impatient with myself and others to the point of constantly feeling like I was behind on time, energy, or effort. I was in this never-ending cycle of running. Even though I had no idea why, I always felt so rushed and overwhelmed. Now I know that it was my belief. I needed to be the best at something to be worth anything. It took me many years to realize that I was worthy just because I was born. Your worth is inherent. You don't have to rush all the time to prove yourself. And you don't need to surround yourself with ticking clocks just because you feel like life is slipping by. All you need to do is be patient with yourself. Give yourself that extra five minutes to finish your lunch before running off to the next task. Or perhaps spend one hour in bed on a lazy Sunday morning. By being patient with yourself, you will start appreciating life more and you will definitely improve the relationship you have with yourself. So what is the first step you can take to be patient with yourself? Give yourself more time than you think you're gonna need. For example, next time you're getting ready to go out, start a bit earlier. Or give yourself a couple of hours more to finish that project. That will help you not rush yourself as much and build a healthy relationship with yourself that is based on self-respect and trust. And as far as being compassionate with yourself, let's start with something small as well. How can you start practicing self-compassion if you've never done it before? By accepting that all of your emotions are valid. What do I mean by this? When you feel angry or sad, you may feel uncomfortable expressing these emotions or even admitting that you have them. 
So what you can do to start accepting your emotions as valid is sit with them and let them pass through you. Instead of trying to run away from them, just sit in a quiet place where you know you won't be disturbed for a few minutes and observe them. See them for what they truly are, just sensations passing through your body. You don't need to attach a story to them. You don't even need to repeat the narrative over and over again. That is just your mind talking to itself. What you can do instead is breathe through them. Let them come to the surface and simply observe what happens. The key to improving the relationship with yourself is to be soft, gentle, and kind towards yourself throughout this journey. I know that all of these things can seem a bit overwhelming at first. That's why I'm going to give you all the tools you could possibly need to build a healthy and loving relationship with yourself. If you want to learn more, make sure to sign up for the waitlist by visiting bit.ly slash the secret waitlist. Thank you so much for listening. If you found this episode helpful, please like it. And subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss out on my weekly podcast episodes. I'm sending you all my love and I'll talk to you in the next one.